Hello, it's Brad Laurie of Blockchain Brad. Today we're talking about all things VID. To explain this further, we have two key members of the VID team. Firstly, we have Manix. He is the lead developer of the team. Manix, thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you, Brad. It's an honor to be here. Super. Likewise, mate. It's an honor to be able to represent companies that are of merit. And we're going to find out exactly what you're doing right now and how you're utilizing blockchain. Also, I'd like to acknowledge the lead concept designer. He, his name is Pim. Mate, thank you very much for taking your time um, in what is a very busy schedule and to let us know about what you're doing BID. Thanks for having us, Brett. Thanks. Okay, so guys, obviously there's a lot of talk about you. You've recently hit exchanges and there's a statement uh, on your website and in your literature claiming that you are trying to end fraud essentially with blockchain powered validation uh, methodologies and mechanisms. But the, the big feature is all about trying to be more secure, to certify, ratify and provide verifications. But we need to find out firstly what the real problem is. If there is indeed a need for this, let's explore that idea of data integrity and you know, what pr prompted the need for this to exist. Well, um, I, our mission is about the digitization uh, that is happening all around us in, in our society. And it brings us a lot of good things like um, ease of use, cost reductions, uh, reducing paper waste. Uh, but it's, it is colliding uh, directly with a negative side effect um, in the form of advanced forms of fraud. Um, because as more parts of business processes uh, move from paper to uh, digital, the analog forms of fraud are not disappearing, but they're also moving into digital. Mm -hmm. And the, the bad thing is that in the digital world, fraud is in many cases even easier because of all the tools that, that you uh, have at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. So we want to eliminate the fraud factor so we can focus on the good side of digitization, on, on innovation and, and progressing as a society. And with VID, um, any recipient can check a file's authenticity in five seconds. Mm -hmm. And uh, with APIs, these checks uh, are, can even be done automatically. So people can just focus on, on their core processes. So, right. Okay. So let's put it in reality for a second in the context of business enterprise for a moment. If it's only going to take five seconds to do that verification process, surely um, there are lots of enterprises uh, that can utilize this technology, that can adopt this to optimize, to be, to yeah. improve their performance, to have that verifications consolidated as we move into a new technological era. But the question now is why blockchain? Why integrate this? Why move forward? So I wanted to ask you as well, Manix, how does the verifications relate to blockchain? Now, why integrate this into the discussion so that you can innovate? Uh, we want to anchor in several blockchains uh, because it's uh, immutable and uh, we could run this without blockchain but yeah as you know databases can also be compromised people can change people like us can change databases very easily uh, hackers uh, at a distance so yeah we want to anchor it in several blockchains uh, several because still uh, one could also be compromised or uh, just disappear uh, so yeah, we want to uh, anchor the hashes of the files we validate um, into the blockchains and our platform, uh, as Pim said, can check within five seconds if the hashes are still the same. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason for, uh, for using blockchain. So Pim, yeah. what about the, the discussions between permissioned and permissionless uh, in the context of public versus private? Can you give us some comment on why in your position public has some sort of genuine uh, validity, why it needs to be, to some degree, public access? Sure. Uh, well, it needs to be public access because uh, we don't know who will receive a file that he or she wants to check for integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, furthermore, we like the idea that you can still check it even in the weird case that VID wouldn't exist anymore because it's on the blockchain and there, there are different methods to check uh, if a hash is still there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You don't have to trust us, trust the blockchain, trust the hash. 
uh, anchored in the several blockchains. And then even if we would disappear, we're not intending to, mm. but uh, then still people would have a way to check if a file uh, was there at a certain point uh, in time. Right. It makes sense when we're talking about those age old terms in, in, in blockchain, at least of immutability, you know, that's where we're talking about you know, the, the, the beauty of the records. They're always there. Um, the, the permanence yeah. is there and, and more importantly, the transparency is there, not necessarily yeah, anonymity. Yeah. The, yeah. The misnomer of anonymity, it's just not necessarily the case, but what is true is the transparency. The record keeping yeah. is always going to be there regardless of the team members who may be there for VID, VID in the short term, in the long term, what, right. what matters is the record. Now, with regard to the key points of unlawful manipulation and uh, being against fraud, there are two things you do state. I want to talk a little bit more about manipulation risk and why you can actually, or if you indeed can solve some of these problems that are presented today. Let's discuss a little bit more. How are you, again, uh, addressing the problem? Let's move more clearly to the solution that you offer yep. uh, and give us some examples. Sure, uh, a very easy example is a certificate or a diploma. Um, some certificates are very easy to uh, manipulate and uh, they aren't being checked because it's too hard to check. If you would uh, want to check someone who uh, did a study at Harvard, it would take you several weeks to get an answer. And uh, with our solution, if they would use it, um, they could check in five seconds. You just send the file over, uh, they'll uh, offer the file at our verification terminal, they get a check, they see the context, they see the company, the publishing organization who uh, validated the file, and they can move forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not just um, uh, the check, it's also the, the added value. Um, people can um, send their certificates more easily, and prove uh, lighter and uh, at a lower barrier that they really did that education. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and then um, another use case is PIM can uh, rent for hours. So PIM, yes. can you do a few? PIM, I noticed there's a long <laughs> list and we're gonna go through them, but I wanted to ask you before we go into that PIM about cost saving. Can we talk about that in the context of these use cases? Because arguably if they don't save money for the parties using them, then there's no real point to it. So can you talk us through that as well? With the invoice uh, example, there are a lot of companies that don't check invoices below a certain uh, number that's on the invoice because it's just too much, uh, it costs too much to check them. Mm. So they just pay them instead. Wow. And it's costing the world billions every year. So that's, that's quite a nice problem to solve. Mm. I mean, we, we have some uh, some nice ideas about that. So, so essentially, so essentially, you can save businesses money because uh, once yeah. again, you're opening all of the invoices up to a fully transparent system. Now, going back yeah. to what Panix was saying with some examples, I've written down a few from your resources. Things like certificates, audit trails, medical records, legal docs. Uh, it goes on and on. Um, clearly, there's real use cases there. But Pim, talk us through some of them that we've discussed just in point form, how we can discuss in the real world that how we can use VID to be cost saving for these different use case applications. It's, it's not just cost saving, but also risk saving. For ex example, in medical records, if you have medical records of a patient and he's progressing over time and you add stuff, um, there's still a lot of mistakes are made because someone uh, has uh, an older version in front of him and makes decisions based on that medical record, the older version. So those mistakes uh, can be um, uh, can be solved as well. So you've got clients, and that's good to hear, because if you've got clients now, that means that you have revenue as well. So people are really paying attention in the real world about what you're doing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we set out from the start to have, it sounds weird in the blockchain space, but we wanted to really solve a problem and, 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 and sell our solution to companies mm. uh, from the start. Um, we we well, don't operate with that. We just well, mm. have, we're building a real business. And Pim, so, yeah. I appreciate that a lot because 
you know, 98%, I'm just going to throw my own figure out there of the, of the things in the crypto space is pretty much bullshit. So to have projects to show that they are really driven by A, a real business, B, real clients, and three, real uptake is quite refreshing. In, I mean that in a genuine way because we need, as people who move to move beyond speculation, into proofs whereby this can actually be viable for the long term. So let's move and discuss this further because it is rare in blockchain to have this evidence of clients, for example. Many of them are still building their technology. They're not at that stage of mainnet. They're not at that stage of being applicable and certainly try and get um, the, the real attention and the real interest from enterprise sectors is actually quite difficult. You're already doing it. So Manix, talk us through not only the client proof, but what kinds of verticals, who's engaging, where are they engaging from, and what can you tell us specifically about how you're building real business? Yeah, so uh, we got uh, customers, uh, of course, in the Netherlands, some in Belgium, some in England. Um, yeah, as example, we just made were diplomas and certificates. So we do diplomas for universities, we do certificates for online e-learning platforms. Uh, we protect news articles uh, for people who want to claim that patent on their article. Make sure no one uh, says at a later point, wait, that's my article. Uh, we protect uh, invoices. Uh, then our VAD stamp comes in the footer. Mm -hmm. uh, they can check the invoice. Of course, it's partly PR in this phase, but still they are checking the invoices and make sure the uh, account number is not uh, spoofed. Uh, we've got a big industrial who wants to um, validate their measuring uh, reports. Calibration reports, yeah. Uh, yeah mm -hmm. To make sure um, they, they remain transparent uh, and they can say, well, these are our reports. Uh, maybe something is wrong with the calibration of the machine, uh, but in a later point, they can prove that these were the calibrations and they're transparent about it. Okay. So we're really uh, ambitious there. Uh, right. Then together with uh, LTE work, we got a few new customers uh, coming up, uh, super collaboration. I think you have a question about that later as well. Yes, I do. I mean, that's, uh, to be honest, that's one yeah, of the reasons I can, I can why. Run yeah, and I appreciate sure, you, could, yeah. you could certainly ra ramble quite long on all the different clients. And that's a yeah, good thing sorry. to hear. No, it's fine because what we need to hear more of is that, that kind of comment that you have a long list of real world clients because, as, as I said before, there is a lot of BS in crypto. There's a lot of narrative. There's a lot of claims. There's a lot of plans and roadmaps. But when it comes down to it, the, the proof of revenue, the proof of real client bases is what we actually need. To see now you have that now as you mentioned LTO that was one of the reasons why I did reach out to you because they are also doing yep. real world business in Europe right now they have that proof with the audits they have the proof of the government uh, contracts there's a lot going on now I want to ask you both was it difficult to secure uh, contracts was it difficult to secure um, agreements with your technology given that you have the pre-existent platform before and you're integrating into blockchain now was it difficult to convince no. these companies to try? Uh, no, uh, mostly it was, was quite easy. And uh, some new customers were a bit harder. But uh, the ones who were already in our network, uh, they saw at the, you know, at the sideline what we were doing. And they loved the ID. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're good for it. You know, we, we, we build a great product. So that was the easy part. Uh, through the blockchain space and through our network, uh, we gave, come in contact with new uh, customers. And those were longer talks, but very optimistic, very uh, positive. And uh, yeah, we're reading them in weekly now um, okay. with some very cool uh, uh, examples as well. Uh, one I didn't say, uh, uh, talk about just now, but the Rembrandt case. Mm -hmm. uh, we're moving into the art world, more into the physical world making a digital copy of a, of a certificate of a painting. And uh, yeah, I, I think really we a have, coaster, so super cool. Yeah. I think yeah. we get two angles right. Um, the, the, the first one is VID is very easy to explain and, and people can apply the mechanism of the service easily to their own situation. Uh, and most of the new use cases, in fact, that we discover, they come from people who don't really know anything about blockchain. Right. I, I can explain VID to my mother and she will get it. 
and she gets it. And, and uh, people, uh, CEOs, managers, they sometimes are a bit like my mother. <laughs> they, right. they don't know a lot about blockchain, but it doesn't matter. I don't know how my phone works. I know what I can do with it. Exactly. So they need to be able to see the benefits of VID. And uh, the, the number two thing is we have a working product that any company can use right now. And we come from a corporate non-blockchain world in terms of software development. And we tend to know how companies react to new tech that impacts uh, their work process. Uh, it's, it's not well that if we want to, well, blockchain uh, in general to be adopted and our solution, uh, you need to have the barrier for adoption as low as possible. Mm. So... That, that's that's what we're aiming for you do, and that's why with vid you don't need to know anything about uh setting up a crypto wallet or what gas prices are or all that stuff um mm. most businesses we encounter that just want to know if it works and they want to get an ordinary invoice for it that might change in the future but for now that's that's how we have our success well, let's move it into the discussion, though, of the feedback from the enterprise sector. You mentioned that there was some discussion from Joshua to drop it. Now, I want to delve deeply into this because that's a narrative that's played out in many projects, not just yours. Now, if this is the mm -hmm. case where the blockchain is of value when it becomes a tokenized economy, what's the feedback been from the enterprise sector with the token itself? Are they actually willing to use it? Are they willing to engage with it? Are they willing to take it seriously as part of your model? Uh, those are three questions. And um, the, the third is uh, they take it seriously. Uh, the ones who want to know more about it, understand it, understand you need a wallet, understand you have to uh, uh, do a transaction to get it into several blockchains and anchor it. Mm -hmm. And others, we don't bore them with it because it's just too far away. They just want to know we're doing something with blockchain. It's a cool thing. They thought it out. Uh, it's great. And uh, will they interact with it? Uh, that's what we really want to get into. Uh, give them discounts. So if they uh, make uh, a wallet themselves and transfer VADT uh, and get that feeling. So we really want to get corporates to think it's normal and uh, interact with it. But yeah, we talked about it earlier. Those are baby steps. Mm. Uh, first, you have to feel confident, and then step by step, they adopt uh, crypto as well. Right. And, and so, but uh, yeah, but we're, we're, we're really, uh, that's really our mission as well to make it normal, mm. which is normal for us for years now. And uh, yeah, step by step, uh, you'll be surprised how smart some corporate uh, CEOs are. They, they really get it. Um, mm. and others, well, uh, it, it yeah, sounds like. It sounds like, Marnix, that in the instance of uh, enterprise, that you are, as you said, you're making progress into that full, eventual full scale in integration uh, potential. But right now, there's also the other side of this, and that is the speculator. That is the person in crypto who's trying to observe um, the utility model and trying to you know, support you in a, in a pre-utility or current utility sense. So, you know, given that we have the exchange scenario, we have people who support you. Now, I want to ask you in that, in that regard, how can those people also um, respect the, the architecture, respect the model, when we talk about crypto economic modeling, where the token itself correlates with the growth of the company? Um, right. it's obviously, when we're, we're almost touching on securities, but we're not um, when we understand the true mechanics of utility token models. It can indeed be possible for that correlation yeah. to happen, but how does it work with VID? Uh, well, that's what we really tried with our tokenomics. So the more companies use it, the more validation gets done, mm -hmm. uh, the more uh, tokens will be transferred from the main wallets to the validation wallets. Um, and then 20% uh, uh, of uh, the tokens uh, we burn and 10% gets bought back from exchanges. So eventually uh, there'll be less tokens available at exchanges 
and uh, prices will rise. And yep. Sure. And I appreciate that, you know, putting a, a number out there is not the aim. Uh, so well, no, regardless of what percentage, what matters is that you're building scarcity in your own uh, token value by ensuring that, you know, there's uh, staking involved or there's means in which you're affecting that supply. And that is something mm -hmm. we need to know because that model literally is the reason why people in the speculative frame would take you seriously. And that seems to be, you know, the, the challenge of the day is getting the attention right now of those who are interested in your value as a utility. Um, so thanks for clarifying yeah. that. So moving back to the tech talk just for a moment, guys, I also wanted to talk to you about two of the key technological aspects, those key drivers of your whole architecture. One of them is your verification terminal. And then you also have another key aspect to it as well, PIM, with regard to your portal. What was that essentially? What, uh, on the one hand, we have the validation portal where you can secure the authenticity of your files, any file. And then on the receiving end, so to speak, you have the verification terminal mm -hmm. where people can check if the file is still uh, authentic or still the same as uh, when it was published. So after validating a file, you can rename it, you can copy it, you can distribute it any way you like, as long as you don't touch the contents. Mm -hmm. If you change one byte, one whatever, uh, then the whole uh, uh, electronic uh, fingerprint will change of the file and, and the terminal, the verification terminal will pick that up. So Okay. So Manix, obviously those two parts are fundamental. But talk us through, obviously you want to comment on them as well with the verification and the validation aspects, but you know that they are integral. They must exist as the heart of the whole VID system. So why, you know, what would you like to say with reference to both of those parts? Uh, what we love about them is uh, a customer can always check at vid.org, but we also have widgets and the widget gets embedded on the publisher's website. So then you have like that double check. I can see the URL is the URL of the publisher's uh, website and I can check my files right there. Mm -hmm. And at the validation uh, portal site, uh, we also have APIs. So uh, people won't get bothered with the drag and drop functionality. It just goes, uh, goes automatically. And uh, that's what we're really aiming at, large volumes. And uh, yeah, we got that API running at three companies already. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, VADT gets transferred, validations get done without us doing anything. And uh, yeah, that's super. Uh, uh, files are being protected and uh, it just works without uh, anyone doing uh, work for that. So got it. Yeah, that's so really, that, really, uh, that order. That automaticity, that automatic approach with the double V, with the verification, the validation, they're really the, the, the key aspects of your design. But now let's talk blockchain because having read your white paper, mm -hmm. one of the things I did notice is that there wasn't a lot of reference to blockchain mechanisms, to blockchain mechanics. Um, so I wanted to talk to mm -hmm. you more about that. So where, what is the blockchain component? Give us a really clear response to what the blockchain part is that's built into your system. Yeah, uh, well, that's like published wallets, really important for every publisher. We uh, generate a wallet and uh, when a file is uh, protected, uh, there's a transaction from the wallet uh, to our validation uh, wallet and into the transaction, uh, the hash or the peppered hash uh, gets stored. Uh, and it have, if it has to be been protected even uh, further, we anchor them in several blockchains without uh, the publishing organization have to do anything. So now we store them in uh, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, in Digibytes, in LTO Network, and also in IBM's uh, Hyperledger. And uh, yeah, especially doing it also in, in Digibyte and LTO Network uh, is something really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, LTO I, being GDPR I, compliant. Yes, oh, sorry. Yeah. And, and I'm really glad you mentioned that. I was hoping you did because essentially it's the technology you created through the VID that does actually support layer one platforms, layer one, layer one blockchain platforms. And that's the point is that you're not just simply going out and building your own layer one solution, but in fact, it's the technology yeah. you're creating that uh, enables seamless interaction with real um, blockchains in an agnostic way. So do you want to comment, Pim, yeah. a bit more on clarifying that so people really understand? 
that you are not just trying to build a blockchain from scratch. Well, if we would try to build a blockchain from scratch, it would defeat a bit the purpose because we need uh, the, the, the safety in numbers, really. We need a lot of nodes because so we need a, a publicly accessible database that anyone from anywhere in the world can access uh, that is very, very much secured against uh, any hacking. So when you look for that, there's only one answer. It's, it's blockchain. So it's, it's for us a very natural and, and the only way to, to do this right. Right. Yeah, and if we were to build our own blockchain, we would start from zero, just a couple of nodes. So yeah, yeah. there was not our ambition, just as much nodes as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the LTO network uh, we love best because they have the, the hybrid methods. Um, and yeah, we can dive in further into that, but yes, the GDPR I'm, I'm, part I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing for that. Us. I'm looking forward to doing, diving in with LTO. But the, the, the key is as well, why build something when there's something already arguably better and when, when you're trying to build something that really is specific to the experience that your team has. And that is with, with the, the VID systems, with the technology itself. So the question I have now is why the blockchains that you have chosen? Let's start with LTO. You chose that. But there must be reasons why you selected all of the uh, blockchains that you currently work with. Yeah, the, the first, um, for, if we take uh, LTO uh, first, uh, it was a coincidence. We just, uh, f yeah, Netherlands is a small country and we got to talk with Rick from LTO and it was an instant click. Uh, he's from Rotterdam, uh, we're from Rotterdam as well. Uh, there are people who don't want to talk as much as we do now, <laughs> but we just want to get things done uh, and uh, yeah, no BS, just work. Um, Real concepts, adoption, it's all uh, the same for me and, and Rick as well. Mm -hmm. So an instant click, and especially the GDPR part, uh, we have a lot of talks with uh, CMS, the big law firm. They want to get into the blockchain space as well. Uh, Rick and I both know them, uh, both know the no notaries uh, who are also working for, for CMS. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the GDPR part, that's why we chose uh, LTO Network. Also because they're Dutch, and that's important for a lot of companies we work with. They more want trust. to look someone in the eye before they start the anchoring, yep. right? More trust. Right. Yep. Uh, Digibyte, um, well, maybe Pim can uh, talk more about that. Uh, also someone we know, Rudy Bauman, uh, mm -hmm. Pim. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah uh, Rudy Bauman, he, came, he contacted us um, about uh, last year or something. Uh, he's Dutch as well. Uh, it clicked right away. We were looking for um, uh, as low as possible transaction fees because that's our cost part of, of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of nodes and um, fast transactions uh, and Digibyte could provide that uh, along with a very nice community. So yes. Uh, we went for it. We went uh, for their uh, integration as well. Right. And, and then, Pim, um, did you spend time on assessing the code, assessing the tech, doing proper deep dives from your end to make sure that they had the, the not just the um, technological value, but the team? You know, did you do a full and robust assessment analysis on them before you integrate oh, yeah, and you work with them? Yeah, absolutely. Because we are offering their tech uh, under our banner so to exactly. speak so right. um, yeah so, so we stand for that and and we we did a lot of research um well a lot of our programmers as well as and uh weeks of testing mm -hmm. before we were really convinced that this could help uh, right. VID's mission. So obviously there's yeah. several different blockchains, permissioned and public, uh, private rather, you mentioned Hyperledger. So for those who'd like to know more, certainly engage with the, the literature. Go and look into the website and understand more perhaps of the different blockchains that are working with VID. Um, and obviously mm -hmm. in the future there'll be more to come. This is not the only list. It's not finite. No, we're satisfied so far um, because we can offer a lot of uh, blockchains right now to our customers mm. but yeah sometimes it opens a door to start a new collaboration yeah. so we're always open for a suggestion it has to make uh, sense of yeah. course it has to be useful we're not checking as many blockchains as we can or something it has right. to add to 
the functionality that we're looking for. Again, yeah, yeah. Well, again, you're about quality, not quantity, and you're not about BS, but about just getting on with the job. Now, guys, I want to ask you about a claim you've made with regard to VID markets being unlimited and rapidly growing universally. Can you tell us a little bit about how you can prove that? How can we know for sure, since you're ex experts in BID and we're not, that this marketplace is actually one of value, one of growth, and one of real potential? Well, um, if you look at just the amount of uh, cyber attack, uh, identity thefts, uh, digital forgeries, that, that stuff is, is just growing along with our society's digitization. It's just uh, a simple um, correlation between the two things. Mm. So that's how we expect that it's, that it's, it's more and more uh, necessary to have a system like VID in place. Sure, but given that you basically answered that with the problem growing, is there any evidence though that the numbers of companies, for example, are engaging more with the solution? Is there any evidence that we can see numerically that we're seeing an increase in uptake? Right. Well, our validation count, that's, that's what matters most to me, is, is rising steadily. So mm -hmm. that means more and more documents or uh, files are, are being validated, which is a good thing. But yep. I, see, I see a lot of growth there because a lot of people uh, don't know about what you can do with blockchain or aren't convinced yet or think it's a bit scary. And there's obviously so much to gain there that we see a lot of growth there in the future. Yeah. Yeah. We're so small right now, and if we would just score like 10 more clients, we would already uh, explode in, in terms of volume. Uh, and for every uh, validation, a VDT token gets transferred. And uh, if we would just like score uh, one um, uh, big company with, with, with an archive of digital files, then it would, uh, yeah really boom and uh, the way we've been growing uh, the last uh, couple of months yeah uh, we can hardly keep up already we have so many leads going at the same time uh, we have to re yeah we have to really cherry pick and choose the the, the customers who also have a uh, great pr value and uh yeah well, well let's let's talk um, about your team then. Up really quickly now yeah. right well pim you mentioned you can hardly keep up now that would suggest that you need a bigger team Let's talk about yeah. your current team in terms of just a very quick reference to your experience, but more importantly, the money side. You know, do you have the runway? Do you have the capacity to grow this team for the future? Because clearly the demand's there. Yeah, well, yes, we do, absolutely. We, uh, we're ready for it and we're actively looking for new people uh, all the time. And yeah. we're adding people as well. So. Um, but we want to do it right. We, we, we're not on a spending spree, uh, uh, taking on uh, new uh, leases for a uh, new office space very quickly or uh, stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Not hiring mass people at the same time. We want to be very, very um, safe yes. with it as well. Right. Yeah. So you're, yes, you're you're part of the team, yeah. P part of the culture. Uh, yeah. We've been having talks with several heavyweights who we are already reserving in case we need them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We see other companies grow too fast, uh, lose their own self, become another company. Mm. Uh, we've been friends since I don't know forever, uh, last century. <laughs> that sounds really old. <laughs> right. But yeah. And um, yeah, when we started the company, we we wanted to stay friends, and we we have stayed friends. And uh, we will only want people who really join the team, not just another face. Uh, mm. yeah, we're really as a part of it. So steady growth and, and doing it right. And, and yeah. Okay. We, also, we also like to work with, with partners uh, yeah. as, uh, as opposed to hiring people directly. Maybe that will come later when we really like someone and we want to reel them in, so to speak. Mm. But uh, we want to retain our flexibility with, with partnerships uh, with people who, who just work on their own, but they work for us and, and help us with their network and, and stuff like that. So, okay, yeah. so obviously we can... That's for money, yeah. I'm sorry. I was sorry. just going to say, let's move it back though for a discussion on experience because we want to make sure not only are you building your team in a considered way, but you're doing it with the premise of of true um, abilities for those that are onboarding, those that have the ability to enhance, 
uh, the already existing high quality that you represent as VID. And also, I'm trying to understand the runway, the money side of it. How are you affording this with this gradual investment in people to build out, whether it yep. be through um, outsourcing via partnerships, whether it be internally building your numbers? Do you have the money yeah. to do it? As for money, we have enough for two years of development, even more. We have our other company, which is generating revenue uh, for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So th that's the easy part. Um, yeah, like I just said, uh, really have to pick the guys who, uh, who, who fit in the team. And um, yeah, we want to make VAD also uh, uh, a business who generates revenue. Right. And... Um, is yeah, that the, is that with regard to the pricing plans that you have? Because I had a look and you yeah. have standard plus and enterprise palm pricing plans. Yeah. But I couldn't quite work out how, um, how your revenue is. Like I, there's no way for me to understand how you're making money. So translating this pricing okay. plan into what you're actually doing in terms of business. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, well, for every validation, uh, we, we uh, ask a fee. Uh, we have a license uh, a program and we have implementation costs. So in three ways, we, we make money. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, currently we're not making uh, profits. We're investing mm -hmm. and we're really aiming for the bigger volumes. So uh, a very large fee per document, but then times millions. Right. So the focus now really, is on scaling. Yeah. So by having yeah, more yeah. clients, your, your focus is investing on the growth of your business right now, which is what most startups need to do in the beginning. But obviously in the future, there'll become a yeah. point where there will be clear revenue made because of the sacrifices you're making now. Within the year, we want to be there. So okay. well, that's uh, we're confident quite fast. We'll, we'll get there. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you because have... the costs are so low. We have a small team. And uh, as we said, uh, when the API runs, it, it, it does its thing and, and we are generating uh, money. So right. yeah, it's a super cool. Sure. Now I want to talk to you about the terms SAS and BAS, because if mm -hmm. we really get down to the nitty gritty of what you are, is it fair to say that you are a product, um, you know, essentially you're a, or a service that we see and the, hence we see that sort of narrative of software as service or blockchain uh, product of service in some way. Is that fair to uh, yeah. describe you in that sort of, category in that middleware yeah blockchain as a service we, we really like that term mm -hmm. because uh without uh third party without us doing the service of the KYCing of the publishing organization uh, the value would be gone um we had an example uh because the art uh guy from Daoist art was asking similar questions mm -hmm. and we said yeah if one was to claim uh, uh the nachtwacht or the mona lisa he could anchor that in the blockchain and that is that uh, it's the power of the third party of the kyc of, of the third party that may, really makes uh, uh, it's uh, valuable yeah. uh, so you sure. really want to focus on that uh, that right yeah blockchain uh, and, part. and what i'm noticing also is that these kinds of basses and sasses are really the hot topics right now for the kinds of things that can lead to mass adoption. Quite sincerely, these are the discussions enterprises are actually paying attention to because they're quite easy to integrate into current businesses. And it's quite, yeah. you know, it's, quite, it's not as problematic as just simply having a layer one blockchain solution. These can be much more integrated into current models. Now, that leads yeah. into partners that are existent now in real business. For example, Airbus. Um, we also have others I can't pronounce that you'll help me with, I'm sure. Wild Radar, we've mentioned LTO, Digital Mainport, HBO, and the like. So what I want to find out is, what's the degree of reciprocity, the value for both sides in these partnerships uh, going beyond the LTO? Um, how does this enhance them? How do we ensure that these partnerships are real? Uh, well, yeah, some of my partnerships mostly are paying clients mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, uh, how do you know they are real and what do they gain from it? Yeah. yeah. The, the ones you just uh, named all have s different use cases. So sometimes, uh, is PR value for them as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it really solves a problem, uh, like uh, the invoice protection, uh, the diploma protection, um, 
Yeah, um, and with LTO Network now looking into uh, IoT solutions, we call them uh, IOE, Internet of Environment, tell you more about that. But uh, yeah, they're as real as it gets. And um, yeah, Pim, you want. And more to come. thing about that, because yeah. we, get, we get a lot of questions about it, and we weren't used to that. From our uh, normal traditional world where we come from, we've been building secure platforms for 10 years now, and no one uh, ever saw it as much of a, as a client confirmation as, as is happening in the, in the crypto. I, I think phase. it's only because Pim, there's so much not bullshit. Not <laughs> yeah. yeah, so much bullshit in crypto. We just want to check to make sure that it's legit. So I yeah, totally yeah, respect yeah. that you come from a place but, where you've had a check. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's that's one thing that we that we. Uh, anticipated not as much <laughs> that, right. that everyone's taking anything that you say they doubt it and they want to see proof and they and and that's uh that's taken a bit uh, just it costs money. a lot of energy as well so it's a bit of a pity but yeah mm. we're also working on that and you as well brad yes definitely to make it into, yeah into something positive and to get that faith back yes and, uh, because we want to i'm glad our company don't know about about crypto uh, mm. uh, in that sense they just want blockchain solutions and yeah of course we also have a token mm. but and, uh, blockchain and is the tech what yeah. we want yeah blockchain is the tech i couldn't agree, agree more monix and we want the your legacy to be legitimacy you know the truth on and transparency on the blockchain there for all to see you know as something that stands true for you in years to come decades to come um now for mm -hmm. these kinds of targets to be met in the future you need to have clear uh roadmaps you need to have a a, a plan for progress i noticed that you have clear verticals like health defense law accountancy finance there's a lot of areas you want to touch on in a much deeper way globally. So I want to ask you this. Are you currently designing any program to reach out to different regions of the globe in these sectors beyond Europe? Yeah, uh, partnerships. So uh, uh, we don't have to do it all ourselves and we're creating tech so others can build on our platform. Um, but now, yeah, we're a bit crit critical and we're control freaks a bit. We want <laughs> to do it ourselves the right way. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's something we're building so others can use our tech to do the same. And the first one I would really love is the notary uh, uh, part. There are hundreds of notaries in, in the Netherlands. It's a big thing. And if they were to use our uh, software, and we're working on that, so they can stamp files and so they can say something is true, then we would scale up like boom uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for similar uh, partnerships yeah, all over. Uh, so yeah, right. without we our efforts, we can still grow uh, fast. So, we, yeah. so no doubt from both of you, we'll expect more announcements as you evolve, yep. as you build. Um, and that won't just be in Europe, as you've made clear. Now, I want to ask you about, you, you mentioned before, Manix, you have enough money to run, have a runway for a significant number of years. You seem very confident with the revenue you already have from other businesses that you've built. But I wanted to find out more about what the raise was of your actual business. Now that you're listed on some exchanges, um, less pressure on arguably on that initial raise. But I still want to clarify for the audience what you did raise, um, whether or not you cashed that out into fiat, and what's left of that as well. So just so we have some clear clarity on it. Uh, we raised about uh, th three million um, mm -hmm. and uh, some of them, some of it we lost to uh, the mining ether and sure. Bitcoin, yeah. of course, but we, we cashed a lot out in, in fiat as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that's the race. Um, we had a, a part is private equity. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, it's a big wallet and we're looking into perhaps buying uh, a bit back from him. We know who he is. We, we talk right. regularly. So you, had a, so you had a whale um, invest in you and believe in you. That's fine. I mean, you're transparent about that. But you didn't also yeah. go out and raise 30 million or 300 million or 3 billion. <laughs> but you raised a pretty, you know, uh, small amount of money relatively even in the time when you've raised. Yeah. So can I yeah. ask you, were the people who generally invested in you, were they traditional investors for the most part? Um, were they, or were they individuals? Or were they crypto-based VCs? Who were the predominant investors? So, so uh, a few in the, in the first round, 
And in the second round, especially within our network, people investing in, for the first time in, into crypto, mm -hmm. we just convinced them to do it and, and uh, they, they loved it. And then uh, more public, but it was really the, the bear market at, at its worst. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, uh, we, we were fortunate to, to still raise. And uh, some of our advisors said, well, that's really rare now because no one's raising. And you survived uh, so, it. So yeah, we were very happy. Right. Sorry? So you survived it, yeah. you, you survived it, you, you achieved your race. Indeed. So congratulations yeah. on that. I know it was a difficult question. I won't press you on it more, Man. expect. I want to ask you now about exchanges oh, because no. now you've moved into that sector. Um, already yeah. there's volatility in the market. I want to talk about firstly, Pim, how you found that volatility affect the integrity of your token. Has it been a challenge? And what are you doing to redress this challenge as this craziness of uh, crypto market volatility plays itself out. Craziness is the right word, yeah. No, it, uh, our volume is, is not really high just yet. And we just started a couple of weeks ago. Uh, VIDT has only been on the market for a couple of weeks. So right. it's hard to say anything really about the price at this point since, yeah, well, the volume is low and we're just getting started. Mm see that we need a higher volume and to get a higher volume we need more new people uh, who learned uh, who learn about vid and who, who who want to join in who want to find it interesting who believe in it mm. um, and so volume needs to go up exposure needs to go up we're working for that obviously very hard right. and then yeah. we hope to add uh, another uh, exchange uh, but then a major one and who knows, maybe even more. So Okay, so right now exchanges, you have IDEX, LA Token, Hotbit. You know, two of those are really prominent. IDEX has a lot of trust uh, from a lot of people mm -hmm. for very important yeah. reasons. It also great has community. potential, great community, and it also has, you know, reasonably sound liquidity as well. So that being mm -hmm. said, you've really focused on some the, the things you stand by. And you've looked for exchanges that replicate the same values. But that doesn't always play out the way you plan with things like Hotbit, for example. Not every exchange mm -hmm. is chosen, um, and there's always going to be other exchanges that just list you anyway. Now, yeah. in the future, yeah. clearly you want to build that liquidity, you want to build the trust with the community. Give us some examples you know, of you know, the kind of things that adding another exchange can do for you. Let's not name names, there's no need to, but what can having more exchanges do for you as you build out your plan, clearly, to have them? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there are very few tokens for sale now. So people who bought them on exchanges are still keeping them. And also the ICO investors are still keeping them. They're not willing to let go. They mm -hmm. see the potential and they see, uh, well, uh, there's not much for sale as well. So compared to the circulation uh, supply, only about 4% currently is on sale. Mm -hmm. So people are waiting. And I think they're also waiting for that. that, that that's the answer for a big exchange and for interviews like this, to no one knows VIDT uh, yet. Mm. And I think and I believe if they see what we're about and the potential we have, uh, yeah, they will get what they deserve. So our ICO investors will get what they deserve. And now the toddlers uh, uh, who are really accumulating and cold storaging our, our token mm. will get what they deserve. And they're so confident that we have a non-official... Uh, community on telegram and we often peek what they're talking about okay and um, yeah they're because, so confident because um, obviously they do focus also on the price and quite rightly you know to respect all those people in telegram they want to see the value now obviously yeah. subsequent exchanges better ex bigger exchanges are coming that's a matter of time and a matter of expansion yeah. of your ecosystem but uh, once again i mean it, it comes back down to the the, the, the mechanisms of support um the the, right now you are just beginning so it's only fair that you know you're given that time to develop and prosper the, the question now will be can you build that community what are you building right now in terms of your social networks to ensure that more people are talking about you on, on a regular yeah. basis that's a great question uh, at, at the bear market ICO we had a, a telegram and it was new for us like we uh, we just said and uh, we had to prove everything, so we had to adapt to that. Uh, we're just a normal company, and it was yeah, quite new. Um, so we changed our uh, Telegram into a news channel, and we just uh, want to do 
four or five times a week, uh, a new news item, new use case, new customer, uh, new partnership. Mm-hmm. And um, we focus on the non-official uh, telegram to support them and to sometimes do an AMA, uh, things like this. And to, to make it be real, because you also know, uh, just like we did those telegram numbers, with, I don't know, 300,000 members. Mm. And then when you see three or four are only present each day, right. and we want to be real about it. So our community has to be real as well. And uh, yeah, we will build from there, but um, it, right. it's, it's a different sport and uh, we want to do it right as well. Absolutely. So if you'd like to know more about VID, then make sure yep. that you go to some of the links. I'll put them below so you can see the different social media channels because it is Thanks. important that people are informed about them. And one of those areas to go to is also the GitHub. And I wanted to ask you both, what's the GitHub status like right now? Are you truly open source? And is that repository um, growing in size with any, anything that's submitted to that GitHub? The GitHub is for the smart contract only. Mm-hmm. Um, and our other software uh, yeah, is, is our corporate software. So it's not really, uh, really transparent, but the tools we are building, the APIs, and the, and the SDKs, yeah. Are building us, yes, they will be. Uh, but yeah, we have some difficulties uh, uh, there. Uh, so the smart contract is public, everyone can check it out. And we love to talk about it uh, to other people. As for the corporate software, it's a bit more, more difficult. And, and that makes sense, because when we're talking going back to the BAS, you've got to protect your tech. There has to be a degree of proprietary, you know, uh, support. Um, and obviously there's also risks of appropriation. So not everything's going to be um, accessible on that GitHub. But certainly there is this um, narrative of transparency in the way you're approaching your company and the way that you're making sure transactions are visible right from the outset for the business you're doing. And that's what's really important. Now, I want to ask you finally about the goals and plans. What is it, you know, within the scope of this year, you really want to make sure you achieve, you want to hit the nail on the head as milestones so that you can really showcase you are the real deal, you want to do real business further, and you want to make it in the blockchain and beyond. Yes. Uh, Well, so the Internet of Things uh, project, we can't wait to tell you guys about it. Uh, That's super. The notary collaboration, something really big. Yep. Uh, collaboration with CMS, the law, uh, law firm, moving into the physical world, so QR codes on art, QR codes on machine parts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and just to interrupt there, for those who don't know what the QR codes are, oh, that means yep. your mobile phones. That literally means your device can access and interact with uh, VID in a way that's never been done before, and that is going to aid in the mass adoption process for not just VID, but for many of these startups. Yeah. We've got Absolutely. video examples and Pimble write a Medium article on it. Uh, so uh, they can really dive into that, try it themselves, see how easy it is. And uh, yeah, uh, what else? We're looking into diamonds, so other physical uh, that's other physical uh, products. We're going to yeah, expand it. into the art world more with Taoist Fine Art. Yeah. Hopefully with another major organization that we can hopefully present soon. And then APIs is... A big factor. Uh, uh, we, we have some things to release around that. Um, an updated roadmap will come soon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a request from the crypto community again is uh, we're developing a dashboard with as much as possible data gathered in one nice overview. Um, so it, it's nice to be as transparent as we can be. Uh, while being sincere to our customers, of course. Right. And Pim, we appreciate that. We appreciate your building platforms to provide for the community with better understanding, with a more holistic approach to this. So essentially, to recap, what we're talking about is three key V um, letter, V words. We're talking about verification, <laughs> validations, and most importantly, volume, because it's really the volume of this company that needs to improve and, and with the community support, as you build your real company, this is how you will grow. As the exchanges come forth, as great interaction with your utility model becomes more robust, you will see arguably a company that showcases things that are doing, being done for the real world by real people and by real tech. So I wish you all the very best, guys, because essentially 
We want to support the companies that are not about bullshit but about blockchain and trying to take blockchain into the real space that we see now in business and beyond. So thank you very much for your time today for both of you. And I wanted to ask you both, if there's one final opportunity to speak, then we might start with you just to finish off as a final statement, what would you like to say to all of the people who support you and all the people who perhaps could learn more about BID? Sure. Um, I, I, I wanted to also, I have some more really ambitious plans that I would shed a light on, okay. uh, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so on the longer term than the things we just discussed, we have been developing a framework that uh, results in huge cost savings for archiving data and we hope to start that soon with uh, the first city council um, we're also working on a pilot around onboarding and using VIDT to, to drastic, drastically uh, reduce costs in that process we're working on uh, that with a group of shipyards mm -hmm. who have workers coming in and out and then there's of course the worldwide billion dollar fake invoice problem that we talked about. Yes. We have, uh, we have a, a, a sort of framework for it and um, I'm writing an article on that uh, as right now uh, that will come out soon. And then there's the B2C area where we have some big plans cooking up. Um, concerning uh, claiming ideas that you want to claim but you cannot share the details of just yet right um, around so, the, so the big question when do you sleep because if with all of these plans <laughs> all these things i don't think you're sleeping for a very long time and this team needs to build yes it's about quality but it's going to be exciting to see you emerge uh in the next few years with all of these plans um coming to fruition actually proving that you aren't simply just about tech but you're out about using the skill sets of the vid team that have had the expertise in the past and can continue that through with real revenue and real proof. Now, Manix, you also have a key lead role in this. Obviously, you have things you want to finish off and say. What would you like to say to the community to give them confidence well, that you are the real deal? We won't sleep to the community. Uh, we'll keep building. And, you know, as well, uh, Brett, uh, when you're in the blockchain space, you hardly sleep. But it's okay. It gives a lot of energy. And we love to work in this space and we love to give back. So for the investors, thank you for your trust. Super for the unofficial community. Great guys. And um, we will talk more and more, but it's, it's not our thing yet. So we're, we're working on that. And uh, yeah, I really want to, um, to keep the space healthy and to work on that maybe together with you as well, Brett. Yes. It's been a great interview and uh Prior to this interview, we talked about uh, yeah, keeping blockchain healthy, mm. uh, real use cases, and uh, cut the BS indeed. Absolutely, so, yeah, mate. Very, and very confident about it and really love this, uh, this talk. Super. Likewise, mate. It's been a really interesting and enlightening experience listening to your story. I've learned more about VID, and that is what is the most important part because that is the crux of your plan. That's the crux of your business. And if you'd like to know more, make sure you look into their white paper, look into all of the journals, the blogs, everything they offer. But what is fundamental right now is that we understand what they're about and what they plan to do in the future with not with other companies as well. So guys, I wish you all the very best. And in the future, um, I would really like to do some short pieces with you so we can unpack this in bite sized And for all those people who would like to know, I want to make very clear, this was an entirely free interview. This is, this is for the people um, of the crypto community so we can certainly learn more in a way that's trustable, transparent, and true. So I wish you all the very best as you learn more as a community. And thank you very much to the VID team for your time. And we'll talk to you very soon. So Blockchain Brad signing thank you, out. Brad. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks so much, Brad. Thanks. You're very welcome.